was on the day of Pentecost that the Spirit of God had come with power. Peter boldly proclaimed Christ in diver tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Men of that day wanted to know what was going on. They were amazed and wondering, and some thought, Are these men drunk? Peter, inspired by the Holy Ghost, said these words of spiritual utterance. Acts chapter 2 For these men are not drunken, as you suppose, or as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will shew wonders in heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. Verse 20, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now if I was there, I probably would have asked, This question, when will the sun turn into darkness and the moon into blood? But of course, it would probably be dead silence because nobody knows for sure God's timetable. Joel 2 had its beginning at Pentecost mentioned in Acts 2. I believe there will be another Pentecost with the rest of the fulfillment of Joel 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. This fulfillment, I believe, will happen on another Pentecost. Now, why am I so interested in the sign of the sun and moon? It's very simple. It's the event of Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. And here it is. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. This event is known as the beginning of the wrath of God. Revelation 6, verse 17, For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Now I believe that Christians will not stand in that day because of the rapture of the church. I believe they will be gone, but I'm not here to discuss that today, whether Christians will go through tribulation or pre-trib. I'm here to discuss the fulfillment of Joel 2, and Acts 2 as it pertains to the blood moon. Now, did you know that Pentecost Day is Shavuot, the giving of the Torah or the law? It's popular to assume that the giving of the law at Sinai occurred on Shavuot, just as the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on believers in Acts 2. The day is important with God, just like the signs of the sun and moon. It signals important events. Today, we have those celebrating every blood moon. But to celebrate every blood moon would be like celebrating Christmas every time you see an ornament. You go, hey, it's Christmas. No, Christmas comes once every year, and so does Pentecost. But Pentecost is special because of the unfulfilled signs of coming wrath mentioned in Acts 2 compared with Joel 2. Now, have you ever considered why wrath is on that particular day in Revelation 6.12? being Shavuot or Pentecost. It was the giving of the law. It was, Shavuot was the day that God commanded the Israelites to obey and live. Deuteronomy 11.8 Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it. In essence, as a Jew, You can possess the land of Israel, God was saying, if you do what I say. Of course, a lot of other blessings came with it, like rain, prosperity, and health. But if the Jew disobeyed, it was another thing altogether. Read Deuteronomy chapter 27. And you'll see, there would be nothing but cursing on the tribes of Israel for disobedience. Listen to this verse in Deuteronomy 29 verse 28. 
And the Lord rooted them out of, of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. In later times, God spoke to the Israelites about Jesus and gave commands. Listen to this command in Mark 9, verse 7. And there was a cloud, the Bible says, that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Now, did all of them hear and obey God? No, they did not. Just like there are Jews today that do not believe in Jesus Christ as their Messiah. In our day and age, they're about to build a Jewish temple, not to honor Christ and his sacrificial death on the cross, but it will be a testament of their rejection of him. Don't you think then wrath would surely come when the reprobate Jew that trusts not in Christ began unholy sacrifices? These unholy sacrifices, I believe, is the key that opens the door to wrath and the complete fulfillment of Joel 2, Acts 2, and Revelation 6, verse 12. The part of the sun going dark and the moon becoming as blood, as signs pointing to the time of wrath. Quote, thy wrath has come, end of quote. John the Baptist called the religious reprobates of his day, he called them vipers. Luke 3, verse 7. O generations of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Even Jesus spoke of wrath coming upon the Jews. Luke 21, verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. It does not look like a bright future for the Jews. I believe the time is nearly at hand. Perhaps this year will be the fulfillment of wrath. Anyone who has not trusted Jesus Christ can do so now and be prepared for protection and removal from the wrath that is to come, that I believe will come shortly. Just say a prayer like this, Jesus, save me. I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Forgive my sins and cleanse me by your blood. You made an offering for my sins, and I receive it. You rose from the dead, and I believe it. Rise me from the dead and give me life in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. This is Larry Zorro. Take care. Bye.